where my father, where is my honor? If I'm a master, where is my respect? He was quite upset with the priests, the priesthood in Malachi, the Israelite priests, because he thought they were extremely disrespectful and give him no honor. So he wasn't accepting none of their prayers of their offering because he got you don't honor me. Another significant to God, Moses and Aaron didn't make it in the promised land, though he was so obey, God, God said, Amen, he disrespect is holy. He didn't sanctify it. Meaning he didn't honor him and respect him, present him in the way how he knew him. He misrepresented him in essence. And God is not happy when he is misrepresented. So let's sanctify him, because the Bible said in Peter, he is holy, so we must be holy. And since the word of God is what sanctified and prayer, we are to sanctify him out of pure respect. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this time. You have gathered us again in your parosha. It is in your parosha we are refreshed, restored, Father. Mm. Refreshed to that spiritual tone to which you will regenerate us, Father. We just thank you for the constant work you continue to do in our life. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord, and personal Savior, His precious blood that brought us atonement and right standing. And we thank you for that grace heaped up upon grace, and the favor heaped up upon favor, and the blessing heaped up upon blessing. We thank you for sanctifying us continuously in our spirit, in our soul, in our body, by your word that is truth and the washing of the Holy Spirit, and you keep directing our heart into your love and filling us with Christ's patience and perseverance in the process, Father. Amen. We thank you for writing your precious law of love in our heart that we take delight in doing thy will. Yes. And laying up your word, Jesus Christ, in our heart that we will not sin, trespass, or transgress that gains thee. Yes. Keeping our life in alignment with your words that our ways are forever clear and clean. You're the one that breaks us away from all the control and the conforming ways of this world and keep renewing the entirety of our mind with the knowledge of Jesus. Yes. Lifting us up to that height and stature of Jesus by which we all shall be measure. Father, we lock the enemy out of our fellowship today, Father, as we stand in your parosha in holiness and righteousness. Given him no inroad, no activities, no influence, he will not able to snare, Father, the fellowship today. But we thank you for Jesus who you have made our righteousness, our peace and joy and unbroken fellowship in the Holy Spirit that your kingdom is manifesting yes. and animating at hand. He is our wisdom, our sanctification and our redemption. Let righteousness flow today, and as it flow, let fruitfulness flow, Father. Yes. Let life and light flow abundantly, where you are glorified and magnified in the midst of your children. We commit ourselves and all will be and ever do afresh into your hands. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we say, Amen. 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 We are continuing, which I'm hoping to conclude today, in the final components of the difference between praise and worship. We've been looking at it over the last couple of weeks. Amen? Amen. And why they need to be done. Amen? Amen. If we don't understand this process, we're going to find ourselves like the John chapter 4, the Samaritan. Jesus tell her, you Samaritan worship what you don't know and you don't understand. He said, you don't know what you're worshiping and you definitely don't know how to. Mm -hmm. Do it. Mm -hmm. We don't want to worship, amen, or like it said in the book of Acts, you know, a God, the unknown God. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to do it in a way that offends God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we need to understand the process, how it is done. Over the last couple of weeks, especially on the Wednesday gathering, we had looked at the process in 2 Chronicles chapter 24, verse 20, where the Lord said, Why do you destroy your own prosperity? Why do you do things to cut off your own blessing? Mm. So if you don't want to do, even though you don't intend to, or, or maliciously intend it, you could cut off your blessing from the way how you're living before God. Mm. This was God, people, Israel. Amen? In Uzziah 4, 6, God reject the whole priesthood because he said they reject knowledge. Mm. And then he said, I reject your children. Because mm. if you reject knowledge, most likely your children will also do what? The same. Yes. So you reject the whole priesthood. priesthood. Amen? So we want to make sure we know the ways of praise. Amen? Amen. And what is it used for? For refreshing, to get into that ideal environment. And we want to know the way of worship, which brings wonderful communion, abiding, and impartation. 
in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to pick it up this morning just to, you know, just to why we are walking the path we are, we are walking, seeking the Lord's way. We also look at Zechariah chapter 8 last week, where God said, they all will seek me because of their essential, their vital need. Say, I have a vital need. I have, I have a vital, vital need. need. One of the things I shared with you last week, everything has an ideal environment. When we read Genesis chapter 1 all the way through to chapter 4, we see everything God made, He first created the environment. Amen? God created the earth, the water. Then He said, let the earth bring forth mm -hmm. its vegetation. So mm -hmm. everything comes out of its vegetation, and for it to work at its optimum level, need to stay in its ideal environment. Anything outside of its ideal environment will malfunction. The plant is there to grow and be vibrant and bring, bring forth vegetation. But if we separate it from the earth, it will begin to what? Malfunction. It begins to die. It no longer can do what it was created to do. And this is the specialty of Satan. This is why he's called the evil genius. Mm -hmm. Amen. You take a fish. Back home we grew up, I grew up on a farm and we can catch fish. If you take a fish out of the water and put it on the ground outside of its ideal environment, it immediately begins to malfunction. It starts flapping all the place and starts to die because it's out of its ideal environment. Amen. Everything God made as an ideal, even Cain and his evil self knew this. After he killed Abel and God said, you have to go, you go, your punishment is too much more than I can bear because he cannot survive outside of God's what? Ideal yeah. environment. Getting by and being able to do what you are created to do are two different things. We can only be or do what we are supposed to be or do in our ideal environment. Satan's plan was very simple and extremely effective. Get the creation of God, the one that is made in His image. Something that is made in His image is it, translated as resemblance, an identical replica. The way to make the replica don't function is remove it from its what? Mm -hmm. environment. Its environment. It will immediately. Man don't sin because, you know, um, he, you know he wants to. He sin because he has no choice. Yes. Amen? Morning, Welcome, Morning. Sister Gould. He sin because he has no choice. He is out. Amen? From where he was created to be in a spot within God's presence. He is designed to be, man functions well in his ideal environment. Mm -hmm. The only time you'll find the image and able to do the thing the image can do is in the ideal what? Environment. Amen. This is why even when God regenerated him, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, God said you are recreated into the image and likeness of Jesus mm -hmm. who is in the radiant image of me. You will never know what that means unless you get back in your ideal Amen. environment. You know, I was talking to my cousins this morning. My cousins are here visiting us. We have wonderful cousins. The bishop and his wonderful wife, Sister Glow. And she, we were talking about, about, about children. And there was a, you know, she was telling me a story. And um, you know, a child that was separated from the father for many, many years. But when the child come back in this ideal environment, you, you could see the resemblance. Yes. Now, outside of there, there's nothing to, to reference mm -hmm. because he's out of his ideal environment. We, because, because we weren't made like the tree that comes out from the earth, we cannot use the earth as an ideal environment. Mm -hmm. It's not the correct image. You mean, the correct image reflects to you, you mean, or animates to you how you're supposed to operate. Yeah. You see? We can't do it in the stars or in the expanse of the heaven because we didn't come out of there. We can't do it in the water. We can do it in the presence of God because we came forth from the presence of God. Mm -hmm. So all Satan needed to do, you see, Satan only, you see, one of the, one of the biggest things, many of us think Satan tempts us when it's to kill someone or to cheat, etc. No, no, no. All Satan needed to do with the accomplish is get you out of the ideal environment and get you to act. Anything you do will be wrong. Read Genesis chapter 8. God said your every move and every thought is evil. We try to make it good. And we try to use our volition, your will, to control it. But underneath that, Christ was talking to his disciples in the, in the book of Matthew because the Pharisees and the Sadducees was trying to rebuke Christ and his disciples. They go, why, how come your disciples are so filthy? They eat without washing their hands. And Christ then turned and rebuked them. He go, why are you so filthy? Mm -hmm. You do not do the things God tells you to do, yet you call yourself men and women of God. 
And then Christ turns to his disciple and he goes, Amen. If not what a man eat makes him unclean, he said, that's not what makes you dirty. It comes out. He said, what you eat goes into the stomach and then comes out. That can't dirty you. He said, you are dirty because of what comes out of what? The heart. And then proceed through the mouth. Once man is not in the presence of God, he naturally is evil. He naturally can't stop. The only thing we do, and we quantify it and justify it, is when God says, all of sin. Well, I'm not as evil as Pastor Chow. He's still evil. Mm -hmm. Amen? A fish out of water flapping around. Amen? And a fish just lying in a boat out of water. All man of sin. All man is kicked out of the presence of God. And God put his cherub in. Amen? To protect his presence. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Sometimes people ask me, well, why do I need Jesus? I say, you need to get back in your ideal environment that allows you to be the best version of you. Mm -hmm. What we all are looking at when we try to educate ourselves, make ourselves better, get better job, we're always trying to operate at our highest what? Level of efficiency. It's what keeps you going. But none of us can operate at the, your highest level of efficiency unless you get back into your ideal what? Okay. Environment. Thank God for Jesus. Jesus atoned for all the malfunction outside of the environment and then got us backward into the environment. Perfect. It is in that very environment you can grow, you can yatir, excel in what you ought to do. It's the only place you truly get focused and your ability to carry out your focus come forth. Yeah. Life is difficult, extremely difficult. You will, you will never, the Bible says for the saints, you will never make it pr properly unless you get back in your ideal environment. An apple tree might have come forth with great potential and the apple can bring fruits and in each one of those fruits there are seeds. It can be a great orchard. Provided it stay abiding in the earth, yeah, in its environment, that will allow it to do so. Mm -hmm. You will only be yes. and do what you ought to do, provided you get back in and abide. Notice Christ didn't just say get back in. He said you must what? Abide. Right. He said apart from me you will do not something, nothing, nothing. 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 Perfect. Perfect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So everything has an ideal environment. We must know how ours welcome sis. We must know how ours. Thank God for bringing us back in through Jesus Christ. And you must know how to abide. You don't abide because you like. You abide because you must. Amen. Unless you don't want to be the best you. And you don't want to accomplish what you have been sent here and created to do. Then I'm not sure why you're doing it. To be, to know who you are, and to do what you were created to, you must abide in the ideal and environment. The Bible, as we see last week when we look at Zechariah, amen, he said, they will all come to find me out of their essential need. It's a must. Not something you like. The only difference between the saint and the sinner, the saint, God has waking him up to realize he needs an ideal environment. Mm -hmm. And if the saint is honest, they'll tell you, man, as I start to wake up, when you read the Bible, you, you, you know, um, um, some say it's an holy book, some say not. What you're going to see, it's a creator and his creation and the many challenge and his work to get back his creation in place. God has a plan and a purpose and a will. Yes. And you will see, amen, the different interplay of the process. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And, the <laughs> and, and the opposition that tried to stop this whole process yeah. from coming about, that's, etc. That's the drama. Amen? Yeah. It's quite a drama, actually. So, God said, man has an essential need. He has an essential need. Amen. Meaning, he needs to get back in the place that allows him to be a man. Yeah, preach it. You need to get back in the place that allows it. Now, when I say man, this is man and woman. Amen? If you read the Bible, God made them you know, man, then he made them male and female. Yeah. Man is the one capable. 
male and female delivery production. Right. Amen. But before reproduction, he made man, meaning spirit man. Mm -hmm. a amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to look, as I said, I want to look at two things and then we're going to move straight into the process. Why do we praise or why should we praise? Amen. And how do we worship? Kabod create a wonderful opportunity. Let's pick it up quickly at 2 Chronicles chapter 24, verse 20. Then we're going to do a quick little review on Zechariah, and then we're going to move on. I want to wrap this process today up. Second Chronicles 24, 20. Please say amen when you're there. Amen. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 20. Amen. This is God and His people. God, out of all the people in the world, brought Israel to Him. Amen. He brought, and He, and he actually gave them the name Israel. He, 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 he called forth this nation. They are the first of His creation to call forth. And He was trying to work with them to get them ready for the world. So He's talking to them. Then the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, Amen, son of Joiada, the priests who stood over the people. And he said to them, Thus say God, why do you transgress the command, the commandment, amen, of the Lord, so that you cannot prosper? Say so the reason I cannot prosper. The reason, the reason I, I cannot, cannot prosper. prosper. It's when I am trespassing, when I'm trespassing against God's commands. Against God's commands. Everything God did, you know, another word for command, amen, is instruction. Every, every, everything you buy in this world, if I buy that camera, the camera comes with a set of what? Instruction. Yeah. That, 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 that word is translated sometimes as ordinate principle, amen, or commandment. Mm -hmm. These are the things that has to happen. Mm -hmm. So God asks them, he goes, believe me, there's nobody who want to bless you more than, more than God. Because as, as he said in, in, in John, amen, he said his glory is achieved in what? In you. So when you succeed, if Sister Glory is starting schools, when the school succeeds, she is what? Glorified. Do, do you understand this process? If Sister Gloria is, is, is building cars, when the cars are set and running and everybody is testifying, she is glorified or magnified. Mm -hmm. do you, does this make sense? Yes. So God said he is, His glory is achieved in us. When we are not functioning mm -hmm. properly, he is, he is what? He's not glorified. Yeah, glorified. He's a shame, actually. Yes. This is the old idea of Malachi. If I am your father, how come you don't honor me? me. If I'm a master, mm -hmm. why don't you have respect for me? You see, this is one of the reasons God could have decided to start over. But he's committed to that which he made very good to get good what? Out of it. You go, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to get what I intended to get out of it. He goes, why do you transgress against the instruction, the ordinance, the commandment, the principle? Mm -hmm. And in doing so, stop your own prosperity. Mm -hmm. Now we should answer honestly, Lord, I can't help myself. He knows this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Romans 7 is about it. Paul goes, I know I'm not supposed to transgress against the commandment, the instruction, the things that can take away my prosperity, but I can't uh, help myself. He got, in fact, the more I try to do the right thing, I do the wrong thing. I, do the wrong thing. He got, I am confused. I am baffled. Yes. I am bewildered. What is wrong with me? Mm -hmm. Why would I destroy my own prosperity? He said, I've come to a conclusion. There is something gone really wrong within mm -hmm. me. And every time I try to do the good, it sabotages me. And do the good I didn't intend, and do the wrong I didn't intend to do. God wants to bless you. This is why Jesus is so crucial. Not just in atoning. He has to live for you. He needs you to do the right thing that you don't sabotage your own one. Prosperity. The more you will not pick up your cross, deny yourself, stop applying you, amen, into the situation, circumstance, and condition, the less you'll prosper. The more you can stop you and get Jesus. This is why, notice God, God didn't say, I make you righteous. Amen? He said, I have made Jesus your what? Your righteousness. Yeah. An example. Mm -hmm. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says you are my righteousness because Jesus is your righteousness. He got to put something in you to make you believe right, think right, speak right, act right, into play right. Amen? Amen. Therefore, you become the righteousness of God. But it's what he's put in you. Hallelujah. And the reason he's in he just wanted to bless you. He's put something to jam you from sabotaging your own what? <laughs> Prosperity. <laughs> oh, I love you. I love you. Do you understand? You might have to contemplate more as my creator in real life. You want, you get glorified if I'm successful, but I'm specialized in sabotaging my own success. So you put something in me yeah. to stop me from sabotaging yeah. mine and his success. Hallelujah. Say Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, give him praise. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? He said, I've made Jesus your righteousness, your peace and joy. And being in the Holy Spirit, yeah. your sanctification, mm -hmm. meaning severing all the things that you like to use to destruction, your redemption, mm -hmm. all the things that keep things the way they should, and your wisdom. Mm -hmm. So you don't destroy your own one. Prosperity. If not, you will never prosper. Amen. And you will be safe. You will be a safe, unprosperous saint. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are many saints that are safe. And they're not prosperous. True. That is one reason. They're stuck. They're, one of the things in theologian, there's always a, a discussion. Romans 7, Romans 6 shows Paul, man is not quite awake with what's going on. Paul said, Are you ignorant of the fact that you were co-crucified with Jesus? Amen. And you were resurrected. In verse 11, it said, Now you know that you have died and you resurrect with Jesus, present yourself to God. As one alive, one resurrected, one not dead. in the whole life. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, Romans 8 show, amen, once man can present himself to God, there's no condemnation shall be fallen because he is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he should be free from the law of destruction, sin and death because of the law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus. He should be free. But in the middle between what has happened and what he should do is Romans 7. What he is doing. The theologian has gone, well, why do we need Romans 6? We know what has happened. We know what we should do. Mm -hmm. But Paul still put in Romans 7. The reality of what goes on. Yeah. I know what has happened. I know what I should do. But the things that I should do, I am not doing it. What I'm more like doing is Romans 7. He said, thank God for the grace of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Because something has to happen between Romans 6 and 7. You need to be put away. Yes. The one that likes to destroy his success, people's success, God's success, anybody's success, need to be what? Put oh, away. Sin. He needs to be put away. away. Even though, you see, Christ came <coughs> and atoned for your sin. Yes. But then you were crucified, the Bible said, to put away the old man. Amen? Amen. Which is susceptible to what? Sin. The Bible says the one that works in conjunction with sin. Your co crucifixion is to stop the conspirer, the one who conspires against God. You. Mm -hmm. Even when God atoned for you, did that stop you? No, that just forgives you. You haven't changed. You haven't changed. I mean, let, let's stop it. When you are regenerated, are you changed? There will be no need for Romans 7. There will be no darkness and light. Two people can't fight. That's good. No, in regeneration, there's still two of you. Perfect. Now you must make a conscious choice. It's the method you, you must pick up. God said, I have given you something, the cross of Jesus, to stop who? You. And I've also given you a new life that if you stop you, it will naturally what? Come forth. When our spiritual life is not growing, there's one reason. You won't deny the whole life. You're giving both of them what? Access at the same time. Mm -hmm. So Paul said, I see two forces. They're waging war what? Against. Mm -hmm. The cross is designed to stop the whole one. Amen? And the grace, amen, is designed to keep, I would say, grow in grace, grace. in the knowledge. knowledge. This is the, the new life is supposed to come forth. But this new life is going to be tremendously hampered or hindered if you don't stop what? The whole life. When you can't follow Christ, there's one reason typically. 
you haven't yet stand on God's word, literally, pick up your cross. The cross is the greatest deductive agency. It takes something away. It takes something away. It will take you away. Objectively, it's already done. God has already declared it. But you need to embrace that. We like to embrace the regeneration. Lord, I like the new life. But this new life cannot do what it's supposed to do if I'm still holding on what? To the whole life. The two of them can't go in this. The Bible said they're antagonistic against what? Each other. Withstanding each other. They have the ability to what? Resist each other. The Bible says in order that you can accomplish what you are supposed to accomplish. The way for one to win, you have to put away what? One. Good. You can't serve two things at the same time. Not good, not very good at least. Mm -hmm. One need to what? Go. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. So God said to the prophet Zechariah, why do you transgress the instruction that leads to prosperity? There's a way to prosperity and there's a way to what? Destruction. Mm -hmm. Success. You might get it by accident, but you typically can't keep it. People that can maintain success as a way of what? Practicing success. It's intentionally. I remember reading um, a little bit about Donald Trump's story. He, he became a millionaire or a billionaire, and then he, he went bankrupt. He lose everything. And they asked him, how did you lose it? How did you become bankrupt? And he got all of the things. He said, once I became successful, the things I, I used to do that got me successful, I got, I've got here. I don't need to do them anymore. What do you think happened? Immediately it's goes. Yes. Because in order to maintain the success, he must what? Good. Keep doing what yes. he was. Solomon was very successful with God by doing what? Maintaining the command and the instruction of God. Perfect. He started no longer following them. He started disobeying and going against them. God sent and warned him twice. Do not push away my commands and my instruction. He ignored it and he continued. Mm -hmm. You know what happened to him? He almost caused his father the whole kingdom. The only reason God kept two tribes was because, not of Solomon, because of David. And he was the wisest man. Once you stop following the instruction, the commandments. Amen? This computer comes with a set of instruction and commandments. It must stay dry. It must stay plugging. Suppose mama decides, well, I have different things I want to do with it. I'm going to put it in water, etc. Does it continue? Does she continue to have the use and all the features of the computer? Now, once it goes out of its proper environment, she put it in a tub with water, it's over. I said this last week, a kettle is a wonderful tool to eat up water and different things. Providing the kettle stay in a dry environment and plug into a source, then it works wonderfully. Now if I decide in my brilliance, because it can eat up water, I'm going to fill a tub with water, and I'm going to put the kettle in the water and plug it in to eat up the water, both me and the kettle will have a shocking discovery, especially if I step in there with it. It only works if it's in its ideal one, environment. Anything out of its ideal environment begins to malfunction. Now Satan knows this. This is the specialty. How do I get you out of the ideal environment? Then all you need you to do is do anything. It doesn't matter what you do. It shall malfunction. Thank God who is merciful. He, he watches us and see. The destruction we are doing unto ourselves, unto his planet. Perfect. And sabotaging his glory. So first he paid the debt. He said, I'm going to pay for all the destruction they have done. Then I'm going to bring them back into uh, their ideal environment that I made them in. Amen? Amen. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. We give him praise. Finish off the scripture. Because you are forsaken the Lord... He also has forsaken you. When we are in the ideal environment, it's where we operate at a high, effective, and efficient level. Let's go to Zechariah quickly, then we move back. So what we read last week, just to get a little ketchup.
it's two seconds. It's about 10, 15, 19. Yeah. 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 And 16 or 18. Let's pick it up from verse uh, 20. 20 to 23. It reads, Thus said the Lord of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come to Jerusalem peoples, not just one set of people, all nation peoples, amen, mm -hmm. and the inhabitants of many and great cities, and the, the, and the inhabitants of one city shall go to them of another, saying, let us go speedily to pray and entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek, inquire of, and require to meet our own most essential what? Need. You must figure out what is your most essential need. And your most essential need is to be in your ideal environment, the place that allows you to be the best version of you. Don't let anybody ever fool you. Every man... Amen. And woman on this earth, even those in God, they have a most excellent version and a most what? Dangerous version of themselves. All they need is the right environment and you will what? See it. Never forget this. Any man or woman that is so holy that does not acknowledge or be aware that they have a dangerous side if they come out of the right environment scares me. Because they don't know themselves. They have not passed through Romans 7. Well, what keeps you stuck in Romans 6 that you can't get to 8 is because you can't see Romans 7. In fact, you don't learn to lean on grace enough to get you out of Romans 7 from 6 to 8 unless you see Romans 7. When you see what Paul sees, Paul tried his very best, man, my best effort. Still, I have evil belief, thoughts, ways, words. I can't believe how angry I get. I wanted to kill that person. Only then you're willing to distrust yourself and trust the new grace God gives you. Until then, you will keep trying, and that's what makes you dangerous. Because in the right environment, you'll do worse than David. You won't just kill a man to get his wife. Amen? We have an essential need. That essential need is the ideal environment that allows me to manifest how I was created, the image of God. The image of God. Amen? In the name of Jesus. The Lord of hosts, I will go also. Yes, many people and strong nations shall come to Jerusalem to seek, inquire of, and require, amen, to fill their own urgent need. The Lord of hosts, and to pray to the Lord for his favor. Thus say the Lord of hosts, in those days ten men, amen, of all languages.